Hey everybody, Yehuda Sunshine here from the Odic Studios for another episode of the Malware Free Broadcast. I'm here with Odic CTO Omri Atan to talk a little bit about CIS, the framework, implementation, and the value for cybersecurity protection. Omri, how are you doing today? All good, all good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. So maybe you could start us off a little bit. What What is CIS? Why should we care about it? Yeah, well, we've been getting that uh, a lot recently. Um, so CIS is the Center for Internet Security, stands for the Center of Internet Security. It's a nonprofit that publishes uh, guidelines, controls, and benchmarks on how to uh, increase cybersecurity, uh, how to harden infrastructure um, and devices, applications, operating systems. Um, and they are the de facto standard for uh, systems hardening uh, in the uh, software world today. Very cool. So maybe, maybe you could guide us a little bit through the, the CIS framework and some of the, the core benchmarks that they identify. Um, okay. So CIS benchmarks refer to uh, a long list of operating systems, uh, applications, databases, web servers, um, you can go to the uh, CIS website and look in the benchmarks category um, to see the list of all the uh, um, software elements that they have benchmarks for. Um, specifically, these are very long documents uh, explaining step by step the rationale and how to harden uh, systems in your environment. Very interesting. So, Omri, who should implement this framework and who does it provide the most value for? That meets us from two angles. Uh, first is for IT professionals um, that need to secure their environments, their networks, their organizations, um, could benefit greatly from implementing the CIS benchmarks uh, on the machines in their environments. Uh, there are also uh, network guidelines from CIS. Um, so using these benchmarks to really lock down their environment and, and what happens in them. Um, second is software vendors that provide you know, their applications as you know independent pieces of software, as uh, software on virtual appliances, uh, as web applications on top of existing uh, web platforms, um, CIS benchmarks address uh, a wide range um, of these elements. Uh, for example, when we went to harden our server-based products, so we did a benchmark, uh, an operating system benchmark to harden the operating system of the machine, a web server benchmark, container benchmark, and finally a database benchmark to have everything um, locked down um, and I think that you know we've we've benefited greatly from being able to introduce that level of security uh, in our products and I think it also communicates well you know when you can provide the assurances that you're CIS compliant that that says a lot about the standard of security that you're presenting uh, um, to customers, employees, uh, partners, and so on. I was wondering, maybe you could talk to us a little bit about the implementation process. You said that, that Odix recently went through this process internally. What, what's it involve? What are the steps? What are the things that, that vendors and, and people who are intending to, to use this framework, what do they need to know? So there are a few ways to go about it. Um, I think one of the main reasons that CIS benchmarks are so popular is that there are a lot of ready-made implementations. Um, so if you're an IT professional, there are uh, uh, operating system images uh, that are ready to be deployed that are already hardened according to CIS benchmarks uh, for various Linux distributions that I've seen, uh, various databases that are already available in the Azure marketplace and the AWS marketplace um, that can be just deployed with a click. Um, also, if you go to GitHub, 
there are a lot of uh, scripts, pre-written scripts that know how to harden existing um, machines, existing deployments. Um, so we used one of these scripts to harden our development environment uh, in our network. Um, so it really makes you know, life much easier when you see uh, code that someone has already written and also cross-reference it um, with code that someone else has written and then you just do minor modifications that you need for your environment. Um, let me just share my screen for a second um, and I will show you the uh, how the CIS guideline looks. Okay. So for example, this is the CIS benchmark for uh, Ubuntu 20. Um, you can see that it was published uh, about a year ago. Um, and all the benchmarks uh, have uh, the intro with the terms of use, uh, uh, who's intended for, kind of a, a quick overview of what's going to happen, and then a very, very, very long list of uh, mitigations categorized, of course, by uh, main category, subcategory, and a sub subcategory in certain cases. And each item provides, of course, a short description, um, you know, what you're going to do, uh, why it is important to do what you are going to do. And then you have two sections that are of interest. The first one is the audit section that uh, allows you to uh, inspect whether the system that you are running it on is already hardened uh, according to the uh, CIS benchmark. So in this case, um, you need to check that uh, the modprob uh, command will output uh, the uh, desired output. And if not, there is the uh, remediation uh, a section that talks about how to uh, provide, how to enable uh, the security mechanisms to allow uh, this control uh, uh, to be uh, turned on. Um, so you will find a lot of implementations uh, on the web that uh, are divided into two. The first one is the hardening itself that does all the remediation steps to harden and to apply all the controls. And the second script would be to audit uh, a server. So you would run the audit script on a machine. You would get a very long list uh, of the uh, sections uh, for each mentioning if it was valid uh, or not. Um, we have a script that we run on a daily basis that audits all our systems to make sure that they are uh, up to date in our uh, development environment. Um, we've also uh, included it in the uh, latest version of our server-based products. Uh, so our clients will be able to uh, audit our product on a continuous basis uh, to make sure that everything is up to date. Um, so, um, you know, for each his own, if you feel like implementing the entire uh, document, that's okay. If you want to drill down and see really why everything is needed, uh, what everything does, and really get a deep understanding of it. So the documents are a great point to start. But if you just need to harden a server and get it done with, then I recommend going to GitHub uh, and finding uh, a ready-made script uh, for the platform that you're looking to harden. So, so uh, after you've taken kind of more of a, a deep dive into this stuff, what do you think the, the biggest takeaways from the CIS framework are for someone who's trying to, to implement this and what do they intend to achieve? I think that the first thing I would do is just download an audit script and check my network you know, my product, uh, my environment, to see what came up. Um, as any benchmark, you know, any uh, uh, security standard, there are things that are of higher importance or more mission critical. Um, so run the audit script, see what came back, uh, analyze it, decide, you know, what's important uh, to you, what uh, risk, you are willing to take uh, what effort 
it makes sense for you to mitigate uh, those risks and move on from there. Awesome. So if, if people want to find out more information on the CIS framework and how to implement it, the key, the key takeaways, where would they go and find that kind of information? Um, so the CIS website is a great place to start, uh, cissecurity.org. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. um, they have a list of all the benchmarks, all the platforms. Um, they have some videos, um, very easy to navigate and find what you need. Um, also, searching for CIS in GitHub will bring up a lot of uh, a lot of projects that uh, already implemented hardening uh, process and the audit scripts. Um, and if you're looking to just deploy hardened machines, then the uh, marketplaces of the various cloud vendors already have these machines ready to deploy. Very, very cool. Thank you so much for your time, Omri. We really appreciate your insights, and we're looking forward to, to learning a lot more about cybersecurity preparedness and how to make sure that you're getting the most out of your implementation. Have a great day, everybody. Be well.